Hey, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. This scenario is the Mir, or excuse me, it's the ISS to Mir uh, checklist scenario. It's mission number two. Somebody posted a message on my YouTube channel saying that they were having a problem getting from the ISS to Mir, so I thought it'd make for a good fly with me video. I'm just going to jump in and give this a shot do what I think needs to be done in order to uh, make this journey. The only thing I'm going to say is that I'm not going to put any effort into being efficient at this. I do know that the better way to do this um, to transfer orbit from ISS to Mir, there's a much better way than just doing brute force plane change, but I'm going to do the brute force plane change. Okay, now, having said that, uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to select the line plane, target mirror, and I'm going to go through this beginning part fairly quickly because I don't think too many people would have any problem with this part of it. So we're just going to control D to undock. A little bit of translation to back away, and press K to close the cone. Then I'm just going to warp time ahead <clears throat> over here to the descending node. And the way this is going to work, when I get to about uh, 350 seconds away from the descending node, the align plane <clears throat> the align plane MFD is going to tell me to uh, fire the thrusters. So we're going to fire the thrusters and do half the burn as we're coming up to the descending node, then we're going to do the other half of the burn as we're going away from the descending node. And since this is such a large plane change, there it's, it's not likely that I'll be able to complete the entire thing in one burn. So I'll probably have to go around to the ascending node to finish it off. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's warp time ahead to till the time to node is about 350 seconds. And the reason we go for 350 seconds is because that is approximately one half of the amount of estimated thrust. Okay, coming up to it here shortly, so we'll get into the orbit normal position. And as I'm doing this burn, I'm going to bring up an external MFD and bring up map just so we can see what's happening as we do this burn. So this is our current orbit, the green line, and what we need is to have our orbit plane appear like the yellow line to match mirror. So as I do this burn, you'll see this green line change so that it looks more like the yellow line. Coming up here on the burn in a second. Go ahead and warp time ahead just to get through this burn more quickly. And as this position indicator gets closer to center, we'll go ahead and stop the burn, even though technically it says to kill thrust, but. Okay, once we get down out to that halfway point, we're not going to get any more of a burn uh, or any more benefit out of continuing to burn. It'll actually just start to make things worse. So now I'm going to go around to the ascending node and finish this off. And as we approach the ascending node, we're going to go orbit minus. That's anti-normal. As I always say, AN equals AN, anti-normal equals ascending node, or ascending node equals anti-normal. And when this gets to about 10 seconds, actually more like 9, which is half the thrust, then we'll fire the main engines and finish this off. About now. I over 
overshot just a tad. So I'm using a little bit of reverse translation to finish that up. Or straighten things out. So you can see in the map MFD our orbit now, our orbit line is now basically exactly the same. Or rather it is exactly the same as mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and close out that MFD. And we're done with a line plane for now. If, if needed, we'll bring it back up later. Now what I want to do is take a look at orbit MFD. Change the projection to ship. It already is. Hit no target. Now I'm going to target mirror. And change the distance so that it's PEA, APA. And frame doesn't really matter. Now one problem you may run into when doing this transfer from ISS to mirror is once you do that large plane change burn it raises your orbit quite a bit and it also if you do it the way I did you're going to be behind mirror so that means you need to catch up to mirror but one of the problems with catching up to mirror is that your orbit time is much longer. See our orbit period is 5,738 seconds and Mir's orbit period is 5,426 seconds. So that's an extra, you know, what is that, about an extra 300 seconds, I guess, that it takes us to orbit than it does Mir. So that means every time we go around, we're actually getting farther and farther behind Mir. So there's a couple of ways to solve this problem, but I'm going to do it sort of the sloppy way or whatever. It doesn't use any fuel, so it's, it's efficient to do it this way, but it's not necessarily really elegant. Uh, but before I get to that, I'm going to say that I'm going to rendezvous with Mirror over here on this side, and it's... Uh, periapsis. So what I want to do is fast forward until I'm at Mir's apoapsis, which is this point, and then I'm going to do a retrograde burn to bring my orbit down on this side so that my periapsis matches Mir's periapsis. Okay, so let me go ahead and fast forward here to Mir's apoapsis. Like that's that yellow circle right there. Go ahead and get into the retrograde position since this is going to be a retrograde burn. And it's coming up here in just a few seconds. So let me press mod now. So let me just take warp down to 0 0.1 for just a second. So Mir's periapsis is 294.5. I need to make my periapsis. 294.5. Okay, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna start that burn as soon as the screen line crosses this yellow circle right here. About right getting at that point, so main engine burn. A little too much. So let me just do a little bit of translation to back it up. We're going for 294.5. And there we have it. So now, this side of my orbit is the same altitude as Mir. So what I want to do now is catch up to Mir. But the way I'm going to have to do this is I'm going to actually let Mir catch up to me. And the way I'm going to do it is Mir is going to have to go around a whole bunch of orbits in order to catch up to me since I'm behind it. So I'll just kind of fast forward here a little bit and you'll see what's going on. I'm just going to press T a couple times. And you can see with each orbit, Mir is getting further ahead of me. And if I just let it go... Eventually, Mirror will get so far ahead of me 
that it'll actually cross the halfway point and it'll start catching up to me. So you can see here, it's getting further ahead. I can speed this up a little bit, but I don't want to speed it up too much because then you can't really see what's going on. So now mirror's about halfway around. Now it's technically catching up to me. So let's go forward a few more orbits. And maybe one more time. Something like that. So now this is me, and that's mirror and mirrors technically catching up to me at this point. So now I can use sync orbit MFD, open up an external, because I'd like to keep uh, orbit open as well. So let's open sync orbit, target mirror, and we're going to use mirrors periapsis because that's what we picked. So I want target periapsis as the uh, reference. So I'll hit mod, mod, that's ship's periapsis, that's there. Ship's apoapsis, that's over here. And target periapsis, that's the one that I want. So I need to bring DT min down to zero. And the way I do that is I come over here to the target periapsis and I'll do a burn in order to reduce DT min down to zero. I'm not actually sure if I need to do prograde or retrograde. So what I'll do is get into position and then I'll just do a small burst of translation just to figure out which direction I need to go. So before I get there, let me open retro doors just in case I need to do a retro burn. I'll show you what I mean when I get up there. So now I'm gonna fast forward slowly because I don't want to overshoot over here to this point getting pretty close I'm gonna go to the retrograde position and as I'm getting really close to the target periapsis now I'm going to do a small forward translation burn and I can see as I'm doing a forward burn that's bringing DT min down so I could use a little bit of main engine and I can see DT min's coming down. Okay, now just a little bit of translation to finish it off. And there we have it. DT min zero. 0, 0. And that's coming up on, uh, let's see, not the next orbit, but the one after. So I can go ahead and shut off the prograde autopilot. And now I can begin preparing for rendezvous with Mir. I can press uh, Control I and bring up Vessel and Mir because I need to know what the transponder frequency is for mirror. It's 132.10. So now I'll hit select, com nav, and I'll make my nav 1 uh, 132.10. And I don't actually plan on docking because uh, I believe that anybody that can actually rendezvous with uh, either the ISS or mirror or whatever the actual docking part procedure is easy. It's ge it's generally catching up and getting into uh, uh, catching up and then keeping your relative velocity at zero. That's typically the problems that people have. And then docking, it's kind of like landing. It's not really hard to do. It just takes a long time. Okay, so, but I will go ahead and set uh, the frequency nav two for the first docking collar. And that's 135. Okay, so there we have that. And I will press, bring up the docking MFD. And I'll go ahead and change the 
HUD over to dock, but we've got a ways to go. I've got to press T here to orbit around, or rather, yeah, orbit. Okay, so we're passing our rendezvous point. Now we're going to go around one more time. And now our dock MFD is telling us that we're uh, 580 kilometers away. And we're still 1,700 seconds away from the actual rendezvous. So let's warp time ahead and get a little closer. Now, just in the interest of time, I'm kind of speeding forward toward Mir a little faster than I normally would. I would prefer to take a little more time with this, but just in the interest of keeping the video time down, I'm going to speed ahead a little faster than I normally would. So we're 140 kilometers away. Ninety kilometers away, eighty. Okay, now we're 36 kilometers away. We're pretty close, so we need to uh, kind of see what's going on. I don't need uh, this MFD anymore, so let me close that out. And we can probably probably have time to take a look at Mirror if we can actually see it. I don't know if we can see it at 30 kilometers out. And we can't really see it. It's it's inside this box. So what I need to do is rotate around. Until I have the uh, bullseye. So right there. I'm going to go ahead and warp time ahead, get a little closer yet. Now because of my speed, I feel comfortable getting in this close. I know the main engines are powerful enough to reduce all this velocity or I should say eliminate all this velocity, even though I'm this close. And I'm going to go ahead and just get in even closer yet. Probably get all the way down to about 2 kilometers, because the main engines are plenty powerful enough to re eliminate all this relative velocity. And if I'm too far away, then it just takes a long time to close the distance. We're actually getting farther away from Mirror at this point, so go ahead and oops. Hate when I hit the wrong buttons. Using main engines zero out that velocity difference. Okay, so we're about eight kilometers away. It's not too bad. Let me go ahead and rotate around so we can see mirror. What I want to do is get that velocity vector on the, you know, on mirror itself. And add 
just a little bit of forward momentum. Add a little more or else it'll take forever to get over there. Say 10 meters a second is going to be going to have to be good enough. And we'll just keep that velocity vector. That's the, you know, that bullseye looking thing. Just keep it right on mirror. And then we'll use a little bit of time warp to close the distance between us and mirror. And every few hundred meters, I'll back off time warp and move the velocity vector back over. Because the velocity vector, of course, is the direction we're actually heading toward. And we want to be heading toward mirror at all times. Even though I'm at 10x, I can probably get away with you. Yeah, just a little bit of translation so I don't have to come out of time warp. Just closing the distance down. want to get, you know, down to a kilometer or so. And then we'll consider it a successful rendezvous. And if needed, we can use a little bit of forward translation to uh, give ourselves a little bit more velocity. Just don't want to go too much now because we're getting quite close. So we're down to two kilometers. And if I needed, I could also obviously select the docking HUD now. And that's done by pressing nav and then HUD. And I can see the docking corridor over there. So let's go ahead and just get a little closer. Okay, we're down to 700 meters, so we'll come out of time warp. And we'll just rotate it down here a little bit so we can see better. Rotate over. And that's basically a rendezvous. We're moving at a mere 5 meters a second, 5 meters per second, coming up on mirror. And there's the docking corridor, so to dock at this point, obviously, we just need to rotate properly, get inside the corridor, and close the distance. And the only reason I'm not going to do that in this video is simply because it would just take an extra 15, 20 minutes to do that part. So hopefully uh, that helps out. Maybe addresses some of the problems that you might run into when trying to make this trip from the ISS to Mir. And again, I do want to emphasize the point. This is not an efficient way to do it. But, you know, for your first try, Translation. you reduce some of my forward momentum. There we go. But for your first attempt to uh, actually switch from one space station to another, I don't think there's anything wrong with learning this brute force method, which just consumes an enormous amount of fuel. You know, if you look at our main tank, we used, what is that, 60% of our fuel just to go from one space station to the other. That's about as much fuel as would be used uh, just to launch and to get into orbit. So obviously this is a horrible method, but um, you got to start somewhere. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you'd like to leave a comment down below. But I'm going to do the brute force plane change. Okay, now having said that, I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to select the line plane target mirror and I'm gonna go through this beginning part fairly quickly because I don't think too many people would have any problem with this part of it so we're just gonna control D to undock Translation. 
a little bit of translation to back away and press K to close the cone then I'm just going to warp time ahead <clears throat> over here to the descending node and the way this is going to work when I get to about uh, 350 seconds away from the descending node the align plane <clears throat> the align plane MFD is going to tell me and as this position indicator gets closer to center we'll go ahead and stop the burn even though technically it says to kill thrust but okay once we get down out to that halfway point we're not going to get any more of a burn uh, or any more benefit out of continuing to burn it'll actually just start to make things worse so now I'm gonna go around to the ascending node and finish this off And as we approach the ascending node, we're going to go orbit minus, that's anti-normal, as I always say, an equals an, anti-normal equals ascending node, or ascending node equals anti-normal. And when this gets to about 10, and as I'm doing this burn, I'm going to bring up an external MFD and bring up map just so we can see what's happening as we do this burn. So this is our current orbit, the green line, and what we need is to have our orbit plane appear like the yellow line to match mirror. So as I do this burn, you'll see this green line change so that it looks more like the yellow line coming up here on the burn in a second. And I'm going to go ahead and warp time ahead just to get through this burn more quickly. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. This scenario is the mirror, or excuse me, it's the ISS to mirror uh, checklist scenario it's mission number two somebody posted a message on my YouTube channel saying that they were having a problem getting from the ISS to mirror so uh, I thought it'd make for a good fly with me video I'm just gonna jump in and give this a shot do what I think needs to be done in order to uh, make this journey the only thing I'm gonna say is that I'm not gonna put any effort into being efficient at this. I do know that the better way to do this um, to transfer orbit from ISS to mirror there's a much better way than just doing brute force plane change to uh, fire the thrusters. So we're going to fire the thrusters and do half the burn as we're coming up to the descending node then we're going to do the other half of the burn as we're going away from the descending node. And since this is such a large plane change, there it's it's not likely that I'll be able to complete the entire thing in one burn. So I'll probably have to go around to the ascending node to finish it off. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's warp time ahead to till the time to node is about 350 seconds. And the reason we go for 350 seconds is because that is approximately one half of the amount of estimated thrust. Okay, coming up to it here shortly, so we'll get into the orbit normal position.